quick announcement at the end of the video. Make sure to watch till the end. All right, guys, welcome back to another M Creator video. So today what we're going to be looking at is different types of air and how they interact with the world itself. So basically when you're working with structures, uh, you have a few options for replacing air, and I'm going to be demonstrating all the different types of air options, how they're going to be basically generating and what you can kind of expect from them all. So we're going to be demonstrating the cave air over here. Uh, that one's air, that one's cave air. The, this one here is structure voids. And then over on this one we have uh, cave air, air, and then structure voids. And these are being generated underground using the uh, jigsaw blocks for the structure here. So uh, that should uh, give us a pretty good wide variety of seeing how the structure blocks and other air types work uh, independently with each other so so let's go back into our test world and I'm going to just fly around and try to find all three of these blocks and give a example of how they're basically working all right so we're in game I have all the different types of structures working we can actually see how they uh, are affected with the water uh, first so this is the structure voids as you can see that it's basically kept the water in the center here then we have these two over here, which is, this is the cave air, so it's kind of hollowed out the water here. And this is the regular air one, which has kind of cleaned out the water around it as well. And if we go over to land, we can see that it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, this is the structure voids. We've kept the sand in the middle, so if it wasn't structure voids, it would clear it out like that. And if we go to the air block, you can see that it's cleared out the air here. That's basically filled it in with air. And this is cave air. Now, there has been some versions of Minecraft where cave air would actually work by um, clearing out in generation. So, for example, if you were to um, have a basement or something like that, maybe your generation for your structures early on in um, generation, then what you would want to do is use cave air as it will give it um, basically tell the game that it's uh, basically needs to keep this as air. It will basically act as air on the surface, but for underground structures and pre-generation. So if that makes sense, uh, caves and stuff like that all use cave air in order to carve out uh, structures to allow caves to be generated. So anything that you usually see with um, uh, like caves and stuff like that. That's all been carved out using cave air. So this has probably been carved out using cave air at one point uh, before it's generated. This gives it the ravine feel. So uh, if it wasn't carved out using cave air, it would just it would just not do anything. It would just have a solid terrain generation. So you get a lot of terrain features using that. So let's go and take a look at the other options just to refresh on uh, these structures and then we can try finding some of these structures around here and see how they um, work with the train and we'll pop back in. All right, so we have our main structure. This is what we're gonna be looking for. And then we have our, this is our cave air, right? Yep, and this is our air, co mossy cobblestone, and then we have structure voids, which is stone bricks. So if we were to enable uh, the invisible blocks, we can see which ones are which. You can see that's all where the air blocks are. Show invisible blocks. You can see this is our air. And this one should be our cave air. Now I wish there was different icons. It would make it a lot easier for uh, demonstrating this. I think Bedrock does have um, different icons, but it hasn't been moved over to uh, Java Edition. So. Uh, just trust me that this is actually cave air and this is air because there isn't really any way to demonstrate it otherwise. So uh, let's go back into game and then we'll try to find this structure and then look at the basements and see if we can't find all the different types of variants and how they interact with the world. All right, so we're back in game and we're going to go to this one right here because I noticed this one is actually above ground. I'm just going to clear my inventory. It makes it easier. All right, so we have air for this one. As you can see, it's cleared out the thing. Now, this is probably going to be because this happened uh, later on in train ge generation. It didn't happen uh, during train generation, so it's probably um, allowed the blocks to basically be replaced. Now, if the train was actually being replaced uh, pre-generation, 
it's quite possible that this wouldn't have uh, worked because um, it would have needed to be cave air in order for that to work. So let's see if we can't find another structure around here uh, that is on land. I might need to go a little bit more inland, so let me just cut in. And there's another one over here. We'll check that one out. I'm not sure if it's cobblestone or not, mossy cobblestone. We'll just hop in here quickly and take a look. Might be something else. Yeah, this is mossy cobblestone, so we're going to need to find another location for that. So give me a few minutes to find another one. All right, so I've basically teleported to another biome just so I could kind of uh, get a better idea of where we are and stuff. So this is the stone bricks one. And as you can see down here, uh, this is all the previous train that used to be here. We have some stone, some dirt blocks that were here. Our torch is still there. So some stone here, some dirt, looks like some grass generated as well. And we got some stone blocks at the bottom there. So basically that was the structure voids. Uh, basically gave priority to the blocks around. Now that might not work when you're working with pre-generation when before blocks basically generate. Um, to kind of give an idea of what's going on with pre-generation is it's going to get the noise. It's probably going to replace it all the stone. And then what's going to happen is it's going to replace the blocks on each level with uh, actual blocks that we're used to. So all the different variants like the uh, train here, we have the grass that's generated, dirt below that, all that's um, later on in the generation stage. So basically what's going on is when we have the structures and stuff, what's happening is er later in generation, it can detect these other blocks. Now, if it's too early in generation, you might need to use caver, which allows it to tell it, carve out this area when it's in pre-generation. So let's take a look at this one. I'm not sure what's down here. This is cobblestone. So this is the uh, cave air one. The mossy cobblestone was the um, air block. So as you can see, this is uh, very similar to the air block right now because it's of the generation level. I'm going to go into the generation settings and actually change out uh, the air one. And I'm going to change out the cave air one and I'm going to set the generation a little bit higher in the list uh, to make it generate early on in um, generation so we'll see what we can come up with with that all right so I want to go ahead and uh, set our cave air one this is the structure where we have the underground basements now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to replace the surface structure one and I'm going to go a little bit further up with generation I'm probably going to go with raw generation and again, that's probably when all the stone and base terrain noise is actually generated. And this might actually have a different impact on the generation below. So we'll see how that actually changes if it does change at all for the different types of blocks. And we're going to save that. Now the other ones should be fine for what we have. I'm not too worried about that. We're just going to leave them the way that they are. Um, we're going to get a lot of the information from this one structure anyways because we have the um, jigsaw parts below here. So we have the air, cave air, and uh, void. So the structure void ones. So we can demonstrate that with all that one whole structure there. So let's go ahead in game. All right, so I've regenerated the world and now we can take a look at these structures and see if there's any difference. So this is the... I believe this is um, air, so you can see that it's generated air there, so it might not have the same effect that it used to um, a while back. Uh, there was cave air that was required. It seems like air now is fine to use, so we'll go ahead and uh, check the cave air over here. I think this is cave air. I'm not sure. We'll have to go in and take a look. What kind of block? This is air as well, so that's... Not the one that we're going to need to go and check out. Uh, let's see if we can't find another one. There's another one right over there. We can check that one out. I think this is where the other structures that I demonstrated were. So this one might be stone bricks. Nope. Okay, bear. Okay. Um, should be one over here, if I remember correctly. This one is different from what I remember. Okay, 
so this is the cave error one. The other one with the structure voids or the mossy stobble, cobblestone was error. So that's perfectly worked fine. So it does seem like they have changed the generation type for structures. Uh, it used to be cave error, but uh, now it's a little bit different. So let's see if we can't find that other one where structure voids. That shouldn't have any uh, change on it. So it's this one right here. Yeah, as you can see, it's basically kept the train in. That's to be expected, though. So, yeah. So, when you're working with structures, if you want the train to work around it, um, my conclusion is use structure voids. Uh, that will kind of allow train around to generate. And it won't end up like this, where we can walk through it. It will kind of be buried a little bit. And uh, in some cases, you might want that. For example, this where the grass is. I could have just used structure voids so it would look more like that, which would have looked a lot better than having that bring a grass around it, especially when, since we didn't have any blocks of stone or anything like that underneath that grass. So it would have probably been better if I used structure voids for that one layer. But um, just some general tips. Now, if you want to carve out areas, uh, what you want to do is you want to use cave air or Minecraft air, and that should allow you to get the um, area underground carved out. So outside of that, if you are new to my channel, uh, I do have a Discord server. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, you can go on there and ask. And most of the time, I'm pretty active uh, during the week. I take the weekends off generally and just uh, wind down from the week's work and stuff like that. But uh, if you do have any questions, the community is also there and uh, people will be able to help as well. So um, as far as that, um, thanks for watching. Now for a quick announcement. I have this friend that has their own server hosting company and they have the lowest prices in the server hosting community and they've given me a promo code to give to you guys so if you want to get a good deal for the first month then you can use the promo code northwest for 45 percent off your first month offer expires july 19th 2034 the link to their site is in the description